at Axis Lab 3D Printing. A spool of plastic can change a life one layer at a time. When you first meet Sophia, you find she's like most third graders. I like to play softball. I like to go play with my friends. I like doing PE in school. Is that your favorite subject? Pretty much, yeah. But Sophia, at just nine years old, has a very special story. She's born in China. She was adopted. We brought her home at uh, three years old. And she was born without her hand. And even though she needs help with some things, like picking up glasses or putting clothes on, she doesn't slow down. We had tried to steer her towards soccer, and um, she kept asking us to play softball. Sophia is going on her third year of softball, but this will be her first year with two hands. A few months ago, her mom found Aaron Brown in his print shop, Axis Lab, on enablingthefuture.org, a website linking volunteer 3D printers to people needing hands, a group Aaron is no stranger to. Sophia is my 54th hand that I've printed, and she's actually my very first local recipient. I've sent hands to Texas, Hawaii, um, over in the East Coast. And you don't have to be a millionaire to go around printing hands. Basic 3D printers start out around $300, and the parts to make the hands are cheap. We have readily available and, and cheap material like fishing line. These are some dental rubber bands for the fingers. The bending of the wrist that actually makes a fist. Sophia's new hand, green and white for Michigan State, is the envy of her friends at school. The boys want to take it and just bring it home, and the girls just hang about. Yeah, the girls like it too. And while Aaron is busy printing up hands for kids like Sophia all over the country, he's making a pretty big impression on the kids right here in Grand Rapids. I tell you, Aaron's a pretty amazing guy making all these cool stuff. And luckily, she got her hand just in time for softball season. In Grand Rapids, I'm Tracy Hinson. And Sophia Howard. Fox 17 News. News. Everybody wants to know who Patty is, so we actually named the truck Patty. Patty isn't a person, it's a thing. We call it the Padillac. Patty Matters, one of nine food trucks in the newly formed Grand Rapids Food Truck Association, serving food in most West Michigan cities, except Grand Rapids. Because we can't vend in Grand Rapids, so it's really hard for us to find a place to park in the city that we're actually allowed to. And in Allendale, it's, it's a one-time permit fee, and we can park out here as much as we want. We're only permitted to operate on private property. The private property owner has to get a special land use permit. That requires a public hearing and approval, not to mention a $1,900 fee. To this point, there's only one location downtown that's gone through that process, and that's the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Many city leaders, including Mayor Bliss, showing their support for vendors during the State of the City Address, hoping to make more spaces available for food trucks to operate. Food trucks are an entry point for culinary entrepreneurship, and we should aspire to support their startup and evolution. Looking to revise the current ordinance in a way that's both respectful of current business fronts and expands designated areas, hours of operation, and streamlines licensing. So good. And if this ordinance is revised, you'll be able to have food truck options coming to local Grand Rapids streets outside of approved businesses. In a way that cultivates a growing food truck population. It's happening. Definitely some progress is being made. There have been a lot of conversations um, with people involved in the process. Having the mayor's support is, is absolutely huge. The Public Inebriate Center, or PI unit as they like to call it, is an 11 bed shelter where those individuals can come to have a meal, rehydrate, shower, get a change of clothes, and most importantly, they have a safe place to rest. Now the ultimate goal once they have sobered up is to get the PIs into a substance abuse program. Many don't stay long, ending up leaving only to have another drink, but I did meet one man who, after drinking and abusing drugs for decades, is in the midst of recovering, and he says it's all thanks to Meltron. Yeah, uh, just drink every day. Uh, I've uh, smoked marijuana, I did crack, did coke, uh, uppers, downers, uh, over the counter medicine. The past 40 years haven't been easy for Lee Bailey. These days, though, things are looking a whole lot brighter. I've got my memory back, uh, more confident. Uh, well, like I said, I got more hope. Uh, yeah, that's basically more hope and just 
Take day by day. Lee has been sober now for about five months, but understanding how he got here means taking a look back to how his addictions began. Oh man, that's, oh, I was probably 12. We used to get to, uh, together my family and, you know, play poker and, and uh, Christmas Day and drink. I asked Lee about the first time he could remember being drunk. Guy begged me that I couldn't uh, kill a fifth of uh, vodka or orange flavored vodka or something. And I thought I was, I thought I'd do it, so I did. I wanted to bet, but I went home and the room went round and round. And about his first experience with alcohol poisoning. I thought I was going to die then, but uh, that didn't stop me from drinking. The next few decades would only get worse. I went to prison and I got out. My brother uh, was out in prison and people down down there was living on the streets doing the same thing and uh we, we knew we had to go was we we're gonna die it wasn't until terry's death a year ago that lee decided to get sober once and for all alcohol took his life uh i fight it every day but i learned from that too and once he made that decision he knew where to turn if it was no male trial where would be at you know that's that's just grand rapids itself you know, you, you can't just say Mel Trotters, but it's everybody. Today, you can't walk around Mel Trotter without someone telling a Lee story. Lee is one of the most amazing people you'll ever meet in your life. He comes into the mission every day and volunteers in our food pantry, in our day center, and most importantly, he goes into the PI center where he used to lay, and he sits next to men that are in the same condition that he was, and he cleans up their vomit, and he mops the floor, and he sits on their bed, and he says, I know where you've been, but I know that you can change. I know it can get better. Lee says talking with those people helps keep him focused. It's two way street. You know, I help them and they help me because for them being weak makes me strong. He also credits the four registered nurses in the PI unit for giving him that strength. Heather Boovey, who came to Mel Trotter right out of nursing school, is one of them. I hope and pray for so many of these guys that they can be, you know, our next Lee Bailey, that they can be another person who is sober and helps come here and just talks to these guys to encourage them to change and turn things around. Her job isn't only to medically take care of PIs that come in, but to build a relationship and try to get them into a recovery program. Every single person who comes in here, they have a story. They're not just an alcoholic. They're not just a homeless person. There's someone with a story and a past. As for Lee, he knows parts of his past will have to stay there. You just got to do what you got to do. What works for you? What you got to find out to trigger? But you can't see it on your hands. You got to do something about it. For now, though, he's just taking the days and moments as they come. Do your best you can. And you're going to fail. Believe me, you're going to fail. But just try to do the best you can. It comes back to you. It always does. If you'd like more information about the PI unit and how you can help, you'll find all of Mel Trotter's information on our website at fox17online.com. In studio, Annie Sitowski, Fox 17 News. For some, spelling can be hard. It goes to B and then the A and then the L. Add a Y and two E's and she's got it. First it's Bailey. While spelling isn't so hard for Miss Bailey, it's the writing that's tough. That's because Bailey was born with a birth defect called amniotic band syndrome, affecting the shape of her fingers and feet. Actually, this hand, when she came out, the fingers were all together. It's hard to explain to, you know, to her why they are like this and stuff. According to David Colombo from Spectrum Health, it's a defect that happens prior to birth. Amniotic band syndrome is a condition that occurs when early in pregnancy, the membrane that surrounds the baby, the amnion, sends little sheets into the space where the baby is. The sheets becoming sticky, eventually cutting off blood supply, making certain body parts smaller, bigger, or even combined. We've dealt with some experiences with um, kids in negative ways. According to Bailey's mom, the little girl didn't notice the difference until now, recently asking her mother why her hands aren't the same. I want big people's hands. Mm -hmm. I want big people's hands. I don't think a lot where I like some hands. She's talking about these mechanical hands made with 3D printers, custom made for each kid. If somebody could help her, you know, make that dream come true, like that would just be, you know, so cool. New hands working to help Bailey 
write and spell her name. 